name is Christian Bason and I'm the CEO of the Danish Design Center. I'm going to speak about uh, the concept of uh, co-creation and its relevance for uh, innovation in policy making. First of all, a definition. Co-creation is a non-linear process that involves multiple actors and stakeholders. It involves them in the ideation, the implementation and assessment of products, services, policies and systems. The aim is to improve the efficiency and effectiveness and also enhance the satisfaction of those who take part in the co-creation process. So we're talking about a creative process where new solutions are designed together with people. It puts people, human beings, at the forefront of public sector innovation and of decision making. There are two major benefits from co-creation in the public sector. One is divergence. It gives access to citizens' experiences, lives, motivations, behaviors, and really opens up uh, the policymaking process to inputs that are highly qualitative in nature, uh, and in a sense, you could say, bring in the real world, brings in multiple perspectives from many different stakeholders, so beyond citizens could be the different kinds of actors that a public institution interacts with, or even wild cards and other actors in society. The second benefit is really one about realization or implementation. And that's because co-creation always needs to involve internal staff um, in, the, uh, in the different kinds of activities and processes. So involving internal staff increases the likelihood that they will take ownership and engage and involve themselves with the solutions that are developed. And at the same time, because you have citizens involved, uh, there's a much higher likelihood that solutions will actually work and function and connect with their lives and their practices. There are three dimensions of co-creation. Uh, and I'll go through them briefly and then I'll give an example. One is to explore the problem space, to dive into people's experiences and lives, often through observation studies, ethnographic research, um, self-documentation, and so on. The second is to ideate, develop new ideas, co-create new solutions in, for example, collaborative workshops. And the last uh, dimension is to uh, make the future concrete through uh, design-led work in prototyping and uh, testing and uh, trial and error together with users. Let me give a concrete example. At the Danish Design Center, we uh, work with uh, a partner, uh, the B. Kuben Foundation, on a really difficult challenge. The challenge is that about a third of homeless people in Denmark have formerly been placed in uh, either foster care or in institutions. So there's something that goes really, really wrong when young people uh, need to be removed from their families or children need to be removed from their families and uh, become uh, placed in institutions or care homes, uh, or even with other families. Uh, there's simply something that goes wrong when they then transition into adulthood and adult life, uh, and many of them struggle to make, uh, a, uh, make a good life for themselves. So together with the foundation, we work with uh, five local governments in Denmark to equip them uh, with the tools and capacities they need to uh, connect in different ways with uh, youth and to develop uh, novel uh, approaches and solutions um, that can make a difference uh, as they transition into adulthood. Uh, the project is not only about training and capacity development, it's also very, very hands-on in engaging and involving young people themselves in developing concrete solutions that can be scaled to national level. So uh, the way co-creation works in that project is first of all, and uh, because it's a non-linear process, uh, the first step here is not a, a user involvement, but it's basically ideation. It's taking the um, young people's view into the steering committee of the uh, project. It's to uh, involve uh, local actors, uh, different stakeholders in co-creation, uh, uh, led by the local government, but with businesses, civic organizations, and so forth involved. Secondly, it's this, uh, 
diving into people's lives, uh, explore the problem through field work. Uh, and again, uh, through the training of local governments, uh, they become equipped to conduct this field work, uh, mostly themselves, of course, with some support from us uh, and from uh, design agencies, by the way. And then finally, we will be testing and trying out the new ideas together with the young people themselves in the local government context. So again, both co-creation ideas, diving into user experience, and then testing and trying out. The future of governance in many ways is the, um, is the consequences of co-creation. So I believe very strongly that the future of governance is co-production, which means that through co-creation we discover ways in which we can actually produce value together with citizens on an ongoing basis. The end goal is really to discover ways of achieving better public outcomes. And through co-creation we discover those ways together with citizens, uh, not just as experts internally in the organization. So that's the uh, fundamental shift we need to see. A shift from delivering services to people to co-producing services and public outcomes, for example, in such a difficult space as uh, vulnerable youth, together with people. That's the future of government. <laughs>